Hi, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about your November drawing challenge, which is Bluevember, where we are using a blue pen to create our drawings. So you have a folder in Schoology with these reference images. We're going to pick one from each category. We're going to do one shoe or boot and then one sort of autumn inspired still life. Um, I want you guys to pay attention to the values that you see in the piece. So for example, the background in this one in the upper left corner is really dark, right? So if we were to do that, create that value with a blue pen, we would want to be cross hatching or making marks in the background to create a dark value. So the darkest value in this composition here is um, in the upper area of the composition as well as in between the two pumpkins. That's going to be the blackest black or the darkest dark you can get with whatever media you are using. Okay, so we want to be aware of that. Um, so I'm going to show you, let me make this bigger. So, oops, so for this piece here, okay, this is the one I'm going to use for the demo today. All right, so let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we do have a reflection of the pumpkin, so we do have some lighter areas here underneath. Um, on directly under the pumpkin is your darkest dark, right? So um, that's where we're going to go really kind of crazy with the blue pen and same with the background. The lightest parts are these little shiny highlights on the front of the pumpkin and also the stem. Those are your lights, those are your whites, okay? So if I were to change this, if I were to change this to black and white, I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit so you guys could see. Um, those are where your highlights and shadows are. The darkest parts are at the background and then the lighter parts are actually in the pumpkin. Now if I were to turn this, let's say blue, as if I were drawing with a blue pen, it might look something like this. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that so we can see it for what it actually is. Okay, and um, I'm going to show you how to draw this. Okay. okay, so this is from the demo video that I showed you guys already. Um, so you do need to get a ruler or a straight edge or something like that. And I have here a variety of blue pens. This is the one that you got in your kit. And this is basically the kind of blue that you'll get with that. Um, I did discuss using additional blue pens. So like this pen will give me different value, a different type of blue. And like I said, this could be used purposefully if you wanted to incorporate different types of pen into your drawing. But again, you have to do it on purpose. You can't do half of your drawing with one pen and then finish it with another one and it doesn't really match or look like you did it on purpose. Okay. So like I could go in, let's say I wanted to add some sort of like these light blue sort of highlights on part of my pumpkin. I could do that, but it has to be on purpose. I can't just be like, oops. All right. So you can use different types of blue pens. And as I just showed you guys in that uh, sort of uh, Photoshop tutorial, this is kind of what we're like going for. Okay. So if this was my reference image, right, and we have it on the screen and we can see all of the subtleties in it, um, you're creating a, a, a page in your sketchbook that, sorry, will sort of look like this, right? And we're going to go from darkest to the lightest to the whitest, so the white of the paper, so the last, you know, like two finger widths or whatever of this value scale can just be left the white of the paper. And we're going from the darkest we can get with that blue to the lightest. And then we're going to create our drawing here. And if our reference image is here, that's what that would look like, okay? So um, here would be the darkest I could get with my pen to the white of the paper. And we want to pay attention to the values in the image. Again, where are the darkest darks and uh, where are your highlights, the lightest areas, okay? So um, I'm going to do it on this piece of paper here. So here I have a quick little um, sketch of my pumpkin, okay? But again, up here with your blue pen, you're going to, I would recommend using cross hatching. To me, I feel like that's the easiest 
for this process. So you're going to start in the darkest area and start to layer in your value. Okay. And this takes a while if you do it right. Okay. We're not scribble scrabbling. Okay. We are going to make nice, careful marks and we're going to keep our value scale nice and neat. Okay. So we're going to practice. How does this work? How blue can I get with this pen? So on and so forth. Okay. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it now because you've seen it in the other video, but it should look like something like that when you're all done. Okay. Now for this pumpkin. All right. I want to be looking at my reference photo. We don't want to make assumptions about what we can see. So I want to look at my reference photo, right? And I want to look at where the highlights and the shadows are. So things in life are not outlined, right? We don't walk around looking like cartoons with big black outlines around us. So how do we see the difference in this pumpkin versus the background? It's the difference in value. So the background is really dark. The pumpkin stands out because it's a different value or different color. So that's how we see that object. So where should I start? I'm going to start in the darkest part of this, um, which is basically down here. So I'm going to start by shading with my blue pen. And again, I'm going to be careful and I'm going to be neat and I'm going to take my time. So when it gets a little bit lighter in the background over here, so I can use that um, when I get there. So this is where it's the darkest. But you can see my lines that I'm making are nice and careful. I'm not scribbling. And this might not be the darkest I can go, right? So I would build up the value in the background and then you're almost getting rid of that outline of the pumpkin. The only reason it's standing out again is because we have a difference in value. So I'm going to take my time, keep cross hatching. And I know I have a couple different layers to get to on this piece right now, especially in this area, because it's going to be much, 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 much darker. Okay. But I want to just show you guys how to do the pumpkin. So the pumpkin is round. It has a round form. It has like these little sections that sort of stick out. So how do we do that? So let's look here. Okay. We see this darker area here. So down here, it's really dark. So I always like to start in my darker areas because, you know, you can always go darker if you need to, but if you end up going too dark in a light area, it's kind of hard to go backwards. So I'm going to just take my time and cross hatch on that pumpkin in that dark area, whatever needs to be the darkest. And here too, at this time, you can kind of change your cross hatches to be curvy so that they're sort of following the contour of whatever object you're drawing. So because it's a round pumpkin, maybe I want my lines to be more curvy. So it kind of helps um, exaggerate the shape or the form of whatever I'm drawing. So you can use more curvy lines. So this kind of comes in here like this. And like orange translates to sort of like a mid-tone, right? Except I have that highlight. So right here should be that highlight. So that should be the lightest of the pumpkin, but I'm going to add a little bit of a value here so that I can show the highlight. The highlight won't stand out if the whole pumpkin's white, right? You need to have contrast in order for that to happen. So I like to sort of start by blocking in the darkest areas because again, you can always go in and make them darker as needed. And then also gives you like sort of a map of, of where you're going with uh, your values and what those shapes need to be. Okay. And again, you can use more curvy lines to do this to accentuate 
the actual shape of the pumpkin. So there's like a little bit of a shadow there. It kind of gets a little bit wider, but it's not super dark over there, right? And here, this is very light, like a lot of the color, the value on the side of the pumpkin is very similar here. It's sort of like blown out detail wise, but it's not white because right here is your white. So we want to do a little bit of cross hatching, okay, over that whole thing. Okay, and then how do we get this stem to stand out? The background is going to again get very dark. And that is, in a nutshell, how to draw this pumpkin. But when we're drawing from observation, we don't want to make assumptions about what we're seeing. Okay. We don't want to go back to, you know, when we were kids and we would draw a pumpkin by like going like this, right? And like, oh, there's some lines in it. And then like jack-o'-lantern face, right? We don't want that, okay? Because that's not what a pumpkin really looks like. So we want to take our time and look at the subtleties in the forms and the shapes here. And like, where are the highlights? Where are the shadows? And that's what makes drawings believable is when you get those values right and um the textures right and they're like wow that's really cool you know that looks like whatever i'm trying to draw okay um and you guys could use a variety of different strokes if you wanted to to add a little bit of ver uh, visual interest to your piece um it doesn't all have to be cross hatching you know maybe you want to do cross hatching on the pumpkin and keep them all like sort of curvy lines and then the background, you want to just go crazy and do some crazy scumbling because you like that contrast of like those neat, careful lines. And then, and then maybe do something where it's still controlled, but it has a different feel than the cross hatching, right? But we can still get super dark depending on how many times we overlap that, all right? And also as the artist, you can make executive decisions about how dark you really want to go. Maybe you don't want that whole black background to be like super, super black. That's okay. It doesn't have to be. But what I would do is definitely get the values around the object where you need them to be to make sure that the object stands out against that background. Okay. So again, contrast and dealing with what's in your negative space is an important part of making decisions about your composition as well. Okay.